there's a difference between, let's say, a physical audit that raises a lot of questions because of the lack of it. But there's also, let's say, a counterparty audit or a loan audit that should also be done. Just to clarify that picture, because of the amount of gold that has been possibly loaned out over the years. Central banks count gold lent to bullion banks as their own physical gold. They count that, you know, that's part of their assets. That They call that gold. They don't say that we have a major risk here. We only have a piece of paper from a bullion bank, which in my view will go under because they can't meet their commitments. And But central bank counts all of those you know, IOUs from bullion bank as physical gold. And when they show that hand one day, which they will never do, but the world will see that they won't be able to deliver, of course, in the end. I don't think that is 8,000 theoretical is not going to help the US in any way, in my view. If that wealth ends up getting destroyed, I don't understand how that value gets put into gold. Because you articulated well that there aren't going to be many other options at that point. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, those values will be destroyed because, you know, if you take private equity, for example, you know, if there's no buyer for those companies, which means that they will not get any financing either, these highly leveraged companies, so they will fail these companies. So the people who are invested in private equity will not have the money to put into gold. That's what you're saying. But remember one thing, Tom, there is only half a percent of world financial assets in gold today. That's your answer. You know, so e even if a lot of assets, it's half a percent of a bubble. So that bubble will come down dramatically, you know, because world financial assets will decline by 50, 75, 80 percent, whatever. You don't need a lot more buying in gold for gold to go up because there's so little gold around. Mm -hmm. So that therefore, no, there's not going to be several hundred trillion of financial asset that, that we have today in, in stocks, bonds, property, etc. That's going to go into gold. Of course not. But, you know, it's going to be a fraction of that. It's such a small market that's going to drive the price up anyway. And of course, then at some point, gold will be, as I said, at a totally different price. One piece we haven't really touched on yet is the idea of inflation. So let's just focus on the war spending that the US is very likely going to be putting out on the horizon here. Does that equal deficit growth and therefore an increase in inflation again as well? Yes, it's quite a amazing how countries all around the, the West, you know, the US, the Western Europe, uh, they're all just signing checks for Ukraine of hundreds of billions of dollars, euros or whatever, without obviously asking the, the people, oh, if they want to spend that much of their own money, will lead to much higher taxes and more misery for the people. And no one is asked, do we, do we want to send hundreds of billions to Ukraine to kill half a million or a million people or whatever? Is that what you want, my people? Nobody going to say yes to that. Nobody's going to say yes to sending their sons or their daughters to a war where they are likely to be killed or a high percentage likely to be killed. But this is again where leaders sitting in cozy offices or underground or whatever just take these decisions without actually understanding the consequences for the people. Debt financing at its worst, clearly very inflationary, because you, again, you're printing money that you haven't got and will never repay, and that'll be inflationary. And as I said, in the end, there won't be any, enough money around, interest rates will go up, and the countries will default at some point, although they will never admit it because they just print more. But then you get into the hyperinflationary scenario, which is very possible too. How do you see the Fed kind of playing out or being able to, to work both sides of this equation. Do you see lower rates coming in to save the day when they have to refinance this debt that is coming due this year? You know, two people pulling the cow from both ends because whatever you do, then somebody's sitting at the bottom like this, the lawyers milking it. Whatever you do, you'll fail. Of course, on the one hand, the US government and the Fed cannot afford high interest rates. They must have them low because with the debt you're talking about and growing exponentially, they need low rates. Interest cycle has turned, lasted since, you know, it came down since 1980, basically. The interest rates are now up. They obviously, if you look at supply and demand, they should be going up. And you look at inflation. And my view is, and has always been, the Fed will lose control of interest rates because they would like, everybody talked about lower rates, but they can't afford to lower rates because also you know then that you will have the dollar collapse and you will have that anyway. Um, the market, in my view, whatever the Fed wants will drive the rates up, starting with the long end. The financing demand that the US government has in coming years, as you mentioned, you know, the deficits will 
escalate dramatically, in my view, will mean that you know, the rates have to be very high to get anyone to buy this debt. I, mean, I think anyone who buys this anyway, uh, treasuries, number one, that the currency will be worthless. And in my view, it's also guaranteed that the government will never repay it. They will try all kinds of games because they won't have enough investments, except for the Fed buying very inflationary. They will now play games like they will force people to put the retirement savings, to put half of the bank account, cash, etc., into US treasuries, probably at a very low rate, and then maybe with a balloon in, in 30 years' time, uh, you know, 2% now and 10% in 30 years or whatever of worthless money from a bankrupt government. That's, I think, what will happen. So people now who have assets in the bank, they run the risk of, as I said, having that money not confiscated because the government will never say confiscated, mm-hmm. but they will force them to put into things that means that the money is blocked for a long time. And obviously that's bad for the economy also because nobody can spend that money, etc. But I think that's a high risk of that happening. They will try to do that in con- combination with the printing also will mean that, you know, the whole banking appear. Nobody will want to. People will try to do anything they can to get their money out of the bank. If governments freeze their money in the bank, I mean, that in itself will create a revolution. Either way, it's going to lead to massive problems. As you said earlier, you're not necessarily just a gold bug. Does this lead you to look at other assets besides gold, like Bitcoin, as store of value through this tumultuous time? Let me explain that I'm not into Bitcoin and we are not in our company. To me, Bitcoin, I mean, was a tremendous investment for people who bought it for nothing. Think just well, 15 years ago or so. To me, Bitcoin has never been wealth preservation. Well, it's a digital money, obviously, and, and dependent on electricity, and governments not banning it. If governments really issue major amounts of CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, I don't think they want Bitcoin to compete with that. And I think at some point they might easily ban Bitcoin. Uh, So therefore, I've said many times, Bitcoin might go to a million dollars or it might go to zero. That's the binary risk that I see. For me, that is not a good investment. I say out of Bitcoin. I'm not saying that it can't go to a million, but at the same time, I'm saying you could lose all your money at some point. Bitcoin short term now, everybody is going into BlackRock, etc. That in itself is a bad sign in my view, not a good sign when BlackRock goes, you know, there's something wrong here. You know, it could go up short term, not unlikely at all, but at some point, I think something will happen which will make it so risky that people regret that they, they held it. I might be wrong. I don't care. I stick to gold. I understand gold because, you know, you look at Bitcoin and the volatility going up from nothing and going up to 65,000 or whatever, then going down to 15,000 and up to 30, 40, 50 again. Bitcoin can, of course, never be an alternative to money because of its volatility. Gold is much more stable than that. So therefore, it is an investment. It could be a fantastic speculative investment. We are more interested in wealth preservation. And from where I sit, I don't see this as a wealth preservation investment. So therefore, we're staying out of it. For people who want to to speculate, yeah, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure they could make money if they're good at it and good at taking profit, but it's not for us. I don't, as I said, and I think the risk is very high that governments at some point will say, no, we will control the money, not the investors. And still today, you can't really spend Bitcoin in a normal way as you spend money. So, and I don't see that happening either because then central bank will definitely say, you know, we're not going to have a competitive money system here with our currencies. So that's my view on Bitcoin. But in the meantime, I wish good luck to anybody who invests in it and possible to make money, I'm sure. And how about owning a gold ETF? You know, this is much easier than trying to store physical gold. But you brought up the idea of counterparty risk earlier, as well as just the actual ownership of something physical. So how do you see the risk of holding a gold ETF? Holding a gold ETF is holding a form of paper, a claim on maybe physical gold. And if we investigate that, the some of these ETFs, like yield, etc., probably don't have the gold. All is hypothecated many times and used many times, etc. Very high risk of that. And it's in the system. It's in the banking system. It's in the financial system. It's a paper asset. You don't have the physical gold. You just have a piece of paper. Um, so that is not the way we look at wealth preservation. That's again, that's a speculative investment. If you're lucky, you get your money back. If you're unlucky, there wasn't enough gold there to meet uh, the commitment to you, gold or the money you put in. So for us, that. That has nothing to do with wealth preservation. If you want to preserve wealth, you hold gold in physical form outside the banking system in a jurisdiction that is as safe as it can be. Nothing is safe, of course. It's all relative in the world. There's no 
safe place in the world, totally safe. But at least you should eliminate as many counterparty as possible and counterparty risk. And therefore, don't put your wealth preservation money in the financial system. You don't put it in the bankrupt banking system. And you know, you know, there are the people who hold this gold as JP Morgan and uh, HSBC, uh, with GLD, for example. And like all banks, they're highly leveraged. JP Morgan has got one of the biggest derivative positions in the world. And so that's not the place to hold your wealth preservation asset in a paper form, period. And, you know, you can buy and sell physical gold very easily at a you know, relatively low cost. Sure, it might not be. Well, if you hold an ETF like GLD, you know, that all in charges about 40 basis points, bigger investors doing it outside the banking system is not higher than that. Why then would you go to paper gold? Uninsured also, of course. Banks never insure it either. In our view, that's totally the wrong way of preserving wealth. ETFs is just another convenient form of dealing in paper money. There's only people who are not accountable and for the, what they invest. You know, these are typical funds that buy these things because it's easy. They don't give a damn. They get their salary because they're investment manager. They get their salary whether it goes under or not, the ETF. So, you know, we like people who have skin in the game and will actually understand that this is a risk that I wouldn't take. So therefore, I shouldn't let my customers take it either. That's how we look at the investments. Excellent, take on For those that want more of your writing and your thoughts, at Gold Switzerland on Twitter and goldswitzerland.com or Von Greer's dot gold as well, right? Yes, one raise dot gold or even make it simple, VG dot gold if you want a shortcut to it. So yes, there are a lot of art, interesting articles there. And we have a you know very sophisticated system of helping people. One of them being for bigger investors, you know, we have the biggest biggest private gold vault in the world uh, in the Swiss Alps with partners. And that's a totally u- unique facility. Yes, people, please go to our website. You'll see, you can read all about it there. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time today, Egon. Tom, I appreciate it. Uh, really good to talk to you. Uh, and I think we've had a very important discussion. So thank, thanks for facilitating that.